Today we are going to be talking about one-sided limits and continuity. By the end of this video, you should be able to find one-sided limits. You should be able to use the definition of continuity to determine if a function is continuous. You should be able to describe the two types of discontinuities. And you should be able to state the intermediate value theorem. First, here is the notation for one-sided limits. This first one is the limit as x approaches c from the left side of f of x. So if you see this little negative here, that means we're talking about the left side of the limit. Or we could have the limit as x approaches c from the right side of f of x. And in this case, we are only looking at half of the limit. So let's find the limit from each side. For the limit as x approaches 0, the absolute value of 2x divided by x. So if we first want to find the left-sided limit, we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the left absolute value of 2x divided by x. I'm going to sketch a graph here. You can graph this in your calculator or you can plug in values by hand to figure out the graph. But we have a piecewise function that consists of two horizontal lines. We have open circles at 0 because if you plug in 0, you end up with 0 divided by 0. So if we start on the left side of the graph and get closer and closer to 0, we are approaching negative 2. If I look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, I'm going to start on the right side of the graph and get closer and closer to 0, which means I am on this upper branch of our graph, and we are approaching positive 2. Now, this means that the limit as x approaches 0 does not exist because the left limit and the right limit are not the same. Let's take a look at look. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have that we want to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side, which is the right side of h of x. We could graph this if we wanted to, but we can figure this out without the graph. When x is less than 3, that's what's happening on the left side of 3. If x is greater than 3, that's what happens on the right side of 3. We want to know the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So I'm only going to look at the third line in my piecewise function. And I can just plug 3 into that equation. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of h of x is just going to be 3 minus 2 which is 1. I can go ahead and find the other limit even though it doesn't ask for it. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left, I would want to plug 3 in for x in the first line of our equation. And I would get 
5. Again, the limit as x approaches 3 of h of x does not exist because the left limit and the right limit are not equal. As an additional piece of information, h of 3, the value of the function at 3, is represented by this middle equation. So that would just be 7. Let's take a look at continuity. A function f of x is continuous at x equals c if and only if three things occur. One, f of c is defined. Two, the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. And three, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. So if I go back to my previous example real quick, this function meets the first criteria. h of 3 is defined. h of 3 is 7. But it fails criteria 2 because the limit as x approaches 3 of h of x does not exist. So this function is not continuous at x equals 3. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. We are checking for continuity here. So for the first function, we have f of x is equal to 4 minus x when x is less than 1 and 4x minus x squared when x is greater than 1. I'm going to go ahead and sketch this graph and then we can look at the function algebraically as well. So the first function, when x is less than 1, we have 4 minus x, which is a straight line. When x is greater than 1, we have this parabola. And if you plug in a few points, it'll look like that. So if we check our conditions for continuity, the first one, is f of 1 defined? No. We do not have a rule for when x equals 1. We only know what the value of the function is when x is less than 1 or greater than 1. So we could stop right here. We automatically know that this function is not continuous at x equals 1. But I want to go ahead and check all of the other conditions. The second condition was that the limit as x approaches 1 exists. To see that, we need to know if the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So as x approaches 1 from the left, we are looking at the first equation in our piecewise function. We have 4 minus 1, which is 3. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right means we are looking at the second function. And that will also equal 3. So this means that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to 3. So the limit does exist. However, since the function is not defined at 1, we cannot compare the limit and the function value to see if they are equivalent. This function is not continuous at x equals 
1. If we look at our next function, we have g of x equals x squared when x is less than 2 and 3x when x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's try this without sketching the graph. We want to know if this function is continuous at x equals 2. The reason we are only checking at x equals 2 is because we know that x squared is a continuous function. So the function is continuous when x is less than 2. We also know that 3x is a continuous function. So the function is continuous when x is greater than 2. The only part that we are not sure of is what happens at 2 when we switch from one equation to the other. And the reason that we know that both x squared and 3x are continuous functions is because they are both polynomials. One property of polynomials is that they are continuous functions. So if we're checking for continuity at x equals 2, you want to know what f of 2 is. When x equals 2, we are using the second function. So we have 3 times 2, which is 6. So this function does meet our first criteria for continuity. Then we need to check and see if it meets our second criteria, which is that the limit must exist. So let's check the left limit and the right limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. That means we are using the first function. We have 2 squared, which is 4. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right. We are using the second function, which is 6. Since the left and the right limit are not equal, then the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x does not exist. Since that limit does not exist, we know that this function is not continuous at x equals 2. Now, these two functions have illustrated two different types of discontinuities. The two types of discontinuities are removable and non-removable discontinuities. Removable discontinuities are sometimes called holes. The graph would look something like this. There could just be a hole at that x value where the function is not defined, or the function could still be defined, but you have a point that is not in line with the rest of the graph. Non-removable discontinuities include jumps and asymptotes. Jumps would be something like this. Asymptotes would look like this. So if we go back to our two previous functions, f of x has a removable discontinuity. There is a hole. g of x has a non-removable discontinuity. There is a jump. The last thing we're going to talk about today is the intermediate value theorem, frequently abbreviated IVT. It states, if f of x is continuous on the closed interval, a, b, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, 
then there is at least one number c in the interval a, b, such that f of c equals k. I know that this is a little confusing, so let's break it down. We have a function f of x that is continuous on some interval. And a and b are the x values. So if I pick a and b, between a and b, this function is continuous. Then I'm going to choose a number k that is between f of a and f of b. f of a and f of b are y values. So this would be f of a and this would be f of b. I'm going to pick k which is a y value to be right here. Clearly k is between f of a and f of b. The intermediate value theorem states that there is at least one number c between a and b such that f of c equals k. So if I look at where this function is equal to k, I have three points. So that means there are actually three c values. This would be c1, c2, and c3. So there are at least one number on the interval, in this case 3, where f of c will equal k. And this only happens when f of x is continuous. To illustrate this, if I were 3 feet tall at some point in my life, and am now 6 feet tall, is it possible to say that I was four feet tall at some point in my life, and why? Well, if you think about somebody growing taller, growth in your height is a continuous function. You are never going to jump from being three foot one inch to being three foot three inches you grow incrementally by small amounts in a continuous fashion. So growth is continuous. I don't really know when I was three feet tall or when I was six feet tall, but those ages would be my A and B values. Three feet and six feet are my F of A and F of B values. Because I know that 4 feet is between 3 feet and 6 feet, so that means that C is on the interval AB. So 4 feet is my K value between my F of A and F of B. I know that there is at least one number C on this interval such that f of c was equal to k. I know that at some point between the age where I was three feet tall and the age where I was six feet tall, I had to be four feet tall at some point. So yes, because growth is continuous and four feet is between three feet and six feet, I know that at some point in my life, I was four feet tall.